actually another ex- a good example of how um cert- that like certain truths can be reported faithfully but also edited to fit a kind of agenda uh the way i was taught evolution in school is uh quite uh it it's quite uh fitting because for example uh the way that i was taught evolution was uh by the example of trees so you've got uh the the trees and they're all in a competition they're all growing and the trees at the top they're the ones who grow the tallest and they uh their branches go out and absorb all the sunlight and it shades the smaller trees the smaller trees die the bigger trees win and that's how evolution works trees are getting taller and all that stuff that is true to an extent you know the 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 taller tree you know certain species you know the the weaker ones do die off so the stronger ones do pass on their genes that is true but that is not how nature you know that but the problem is a lot of people then took that uh like for example the british empire took that and went like oh so the the, the strongest and uh, uh, shall survive and the weak shall die oh that means we can go and enslave these people right that means we can we can you know exploit these countries and all that stuff because social darwinism and uh and the strongest and better survival of the species yeah 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 we we, we can go and enslave all these people worry free it's just it's the way of nature not our fault uh but of course that's not how the trees work in the tree analogy actually what happens is the taller trees pass down nutrients to the smaller trees and the fungus take uh, a sort of a kind of service transaction and the leaves support and the leaves falling from the trees feed the soil which enriches that and you've got the termites coming in and it's a collaborative uh network so it's not that is not how nature works at all nature is is a far more sort of uh anarchic in the true sense anarchic you know without rulers um yeah sort of cooperative mutually supportive network uh so actually the but but the way we were taught it in school uh is used you know what was you know we were just given the very cut down survival of the fittest uh, narrative and i think uh, an element of that at least uh might have been due to lack of time or it might have been due to but i think perhaps an element of it is that you know uh a lot of it was sort of made in order to uh suit the uh interests of the people you know the society we're being prepared for uh which you know it's a very you know it's a very hyper capitalist hyper competitive uh sort of all uh, system where if you don't uh grow the grow to be the tallest tree and if you don't shade the other trees and kill them off you're gonna get your your head chopped off it's a yeah, yeah. and and it's and i'm not being um uh, you know there is there is ev- there is precedent there is precedence for the the you know these sort of things happening for example when margaret thatcher uh took over uh i say took over it makes it sound like she, she did a coup uh, no, when she got elected <laughs> fairly through the democratic process, <clears throat> when Margaret Thatcher took over, um, she uh, it was she she ran a, a campaign which was she uh, altered the curriculum. That was it. She altered the school curriculum to erase the concept of homosexuality. She didn't want it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it was basically the largest one of the largest campaigns to just uh erase an entire you know it was like you couldn't even acknowledge that homosexuality was a thing because any acknowledgement of homosexuality was to promote homosexuality so you can't you can't talk about it you can't mention it and as a result you know it, it created a much it, you know it, it rolled back a lot of uh progress in the in terms of gay rights yeah uh, that makes sorry. a lot of sense actually yeah and so by <laughs> you know it, it's it, it's very simple you know if you want to you know it, it, if you want to uh to raise a certain kind of population 
then you you have to the education is the first place that you go because that's where you get your first stories or uh civil rights civil rights for uh black people uh when we were taught about that in school we were taught about the lynchings we were taught about the kkk we were taught about martin luther king and rosa parks and it went right up until the point when segregation ended and then it stopped the implication of course being that racism doesn't exist anymore which uh very much <laughs> you can it's, it's, yeah. you can see nowadays that you know very much the remnants of you know that definitely has i uh kind of in in response to uh to hearing about the the black lives matter movements and and stuff that has has been going on this year i uh i kind of realize um exactly what you've been saying what um that i have grown up in uh, uh i i like to think that I uh, I believe in inequality and uh, and that uh, all all people uh, all all people uh, have a right to be uh, accepted as as they are. All all people matter equally, um, and I. Uh, but because I'd grown up uh, in a small town, uh, gone to school, gone to college, gone to university, uh, in a place where um, I could count on on one hand the amount of non-white people I've probably ever met. Yeah, same here. Um, yeah, I um, I don't know what. Um, uh, what kinds of uh, of racist ideas I have internalized without realizing it? I I don't know what kind of systems I'm I'm complicit in. Um, just by um, the the belief that I I used to have growing up as as a child that um, the uh, that the world we live in in today is a uh, a peaceful utopia compared to the way things used to be and that's that's kind of the uh the story that i think um the narrative of history as it was presented to me yeah. uh kind of taught me yeah and and in fact that's what uh that's what a lot of things taught me there's uh there's a lot of cartoons and uh um a lot of stories in in media that revolve around the the idea of uh oh something is trying to upset the the perfect balance that exists um oh, in, in a world yeah yeah you uh, don't even think about it yeah uh but getting uh back to the uh, the the racism conversation um i uh in response to to hearing about all of that and, and realizing that uh we have not made as much progress as we have been led to believe i um i i bought a book uh called uh so you want to talk about race uh by uh idioma oliwo mm. um I uh, I'm still reading it, but um, uh, but the big thing I am taking away from it so far is that um, is that uh, black activists who who want to make a change um, they want to do it peacefully, but uh, a big obstacle is that uh they need to talk about uh the every like tiny way that they are um they are put down and made lesser in in a way that is comfortable for 
non-black people yeah to hear yeah because it sucks because yeah. it sucks yeah. to think about this stuff it sucks to be a kind of you know even a liberal you know i consider myself a bit more left of liberal but uh you know e- even for a liberal uh it sucks to think you know of, of yourself as somebody who believes in equality and yet come to the realization that you are complicit in racist systems and some people can't bear that some people can't stomach that because they're just trying to get on with their lives because they're just trying to think because they've got a shitty job and they they they, you know there's already enough concerns about that and they've got financial concerns and that and and some people are just like i can't bear to think about another thing that's wrong (laughs) especially when it's you know something that you are doing but you don't have a clear way out. It's not like and I think, it's you know. What are you going to do? Yeah. Not pay your taxes? Then you go to prison. Yeah. And so we're forced a, to be complicit in it. It's because it's it's something that's so so big. Mm. Um, you're so so busy just trying to live within the status quo that you can't even imagine. Um, what you can do to change it yeah yeah and and then you've got the you know you, you've got uh politicians uh again like margaret thatcher uh one of my favorite people who you know would who uh what one of her central slogans essentially was there is no alternative mm-hmm. 